What would you say if I told you that two out of three jobs available by 2030 don't exist yet? And that you're currently not learning the necessary skills to survive in our 21st century society. And that we, youth, are the most vulnerable group when it comes to starting new businesses. Welcome to What Would You Say? A Y20 talk show about the most urgent issues of young people today. For those who don't know what the Y20 is, we'll explain. The Y20 means the youth 20. The voice of the youth. This year, the Y20 brings over 60 young delegates from over 23 countries and organizations together to discuss the most pressing challenges and opportunities faced by young people today. Together, they write policy recommendations that are then submitted to G20 leaders for their consideration during the G20 summit. This way, the youth shines their light on world politics. Our topic of today is future skills. And we'll be discussing each topic with Y20 delegates with the sole purpose of inspiring you. Mark, tell us, who are the delegates who will explore the topic of future skills with today? For future skills, we have with us from Japan, Wakana. Wakana represented Japan as an organizer at the Y20 in 2019. She has earned her bachelor's degree in liberal arts and currently works at an American IT firm. In the future, she'd love to help vulnerable people with technology and have her own bar. Her favorite ice cream? Matcha ice. Joining Wakana is Leila from Saudi Arabia. Her dream is to co-found a positively disrupting startup or become a diplomat. Her favorite way to chill is knitting. And our third delegate is Federico. He represented Argentina at the Y20 in 2019. His aim is to close the digital talent gap and one day he would love to be a chief innovation officer. But his biggest talent is playing the ukulele. Welcome to you all. Hi, Wakana, Leila, Federico, how are you all doing? Are you ready for us to pick your bright minds and that on a Monday? Yes. Yay. <laughs> yes, Go. amazing. Look at the enthusiasm. <laughs> what we want to focus on today is the future. What can work in the future? Most importantly, what skills do we need to be future ready? Uh, b before you answer, dear delegates, uh, and Yusra, I'm so sorry for interrupting, but, but I have a, a proposal. Maybe let's do like a brainstorm with everybody together here, and, and then we put a time, like a clock. Let's, Kimberly, can we have, uh, because you have an hourglass that has one minute and 15 seconds, right? Yes. Okay, what we'll do is we do a brainstorm. You can turn it around and then we have one minute, 15 seconds to come up with as many possible skills as we can have. And Lala, can you write it down for yes, us? Yes, sure. Okay, so three, two, one, go. go. Leila, what kind of skills do we need? So um, we definitely need uh, some communication skills, uh, writing, public speaking, persuasion as well uh, in terms of technical or digital skills, data science, uh, statisticians or statistics related skills, problem solving skills, as well as uh, coding in any language. Um, Very well, we have, we have, yeah, yeah, so we have coding, we have writing, yeah. we have creative skills. Okay, uh, Wakana, what skills do we need? Sorry. We have a few more seconds left, go. Okay, um, I think storytelling skill is the most important thing to grab people's heart and also um, affect some like, um, decision making process of them. So story scaling skills, I really love that word, storytellers. Frederico, I see you smiling, but do you also have an idea what do we need for future skills? What do we need? Entrepreneurship, I think one of the most important, important things. Empathy, public speaking, mindfulness, and the science thinking frameworks, different agile frameworks like Scrum, and the ability to be resilient and relearn and forget stuff constantly. Oh, the ability to relearn and forget stuff constantly. I love that. And also having dogs nearby, as I can hear, Federico, very well. <laughs> Making sure you have enough dogs. Yusra, is there anything that they are forgetting? Yes, what else would you add? Federico basically uh, said everything that I want to say. So thanks for that, Federico. Uh, but yeah, I would like to tap into what he said about empathy and perhaps most importantly, uh, multi-perspectivity, the ability to shift gazes. Multi-perspectivity, a new world we learned. Uh, Kimberly, you also have one? Problem solving? Problem solving, and you say it as if there is no problem in the world. Okay, problem solving. <laughs> uh, dear delegates, we still have a few seconds left. What else should be on the list, which is already quite long? Anyone? Anyone? Mm -hmm. Lila is thinking, Wakana is thinking, Federico, yes. Mathematical literacy, I think like every general subject literacy, geography literacy, history literacy, not memorizing, but in order to mm -hmm. be able to forecast things into the future. Yeah. Analytical thinking. 
Wow, very well. Yeah. Last, who has the last word? Of course, a lady, Leila. Yeah, networking. Oh, yeah. Networking in a technical sense and in a social sense as well. I really love the way yeah. Wakana was also raising a hand. I want to say something. Sorry. And then Leela said oh. networking and Wakana was like, no, nah, that was my one. <laughs> Wakana, please. Do you, do you also still have a last one? Because the time is up, but I give you the last word. Which one should we still okay, add um, to the list? Along with technology, I think uh, understanding history is really important to, um, to have empathy and understand more uh, um, more appropriate as a countries and people. I understand. The idea that you understand other cultures, understand other people. So, we'll look at our list. We have this very long list that actually Lala is still almost finishing. It's, it's way long. I really like it. Actually, if you look at this list, it comes very close to what the National Governors Association came up with as the skills we need for the future. They call it the four C's, which is creativity, critical thinking, um, communication, and you see? I really find it very difficult to talk to these words because they are like four abstract words which you never remember, go like C, 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 C. So we asked Mark to help us remember those words with music, you know, that's the best way to remember something. Mark, please help us remember the four C's with some music. Thank you, Mark. That was amazing. I, for one, am never going to forget about the four C's ever again. In fact, I think you should call it the five C song, given how cool it was. You see what I did there? Woo! Sorry for the two silly jokes. I do that sometimes. Forgive me. But let's move on. So now that we know what skills we need, the real question is how and where do we learn them? Delegates, you know I'm going to address you. Wakana, maybe you can start off with some ideas? Uh, okay. At least in Japanese case, I don't think the um, school, especially the public schools, are ready for uh, giving these skills for students and students. So yeah, um, for now we think I think that we should um, brush up these skills outside class and uh, the classroom. But also the schools and the government should be prepared to um, obtain these skills for um, the students and children. Okay. Anyone wanting to add to that point? Maybe Leila? There's definitely uh, things to learn within the classroom which need to be updated and reimagined for the 21st century skills that we just uh, talked and sang about. <laughs> In addition, there has to be more emphasis on uh, experiential learning outside of the classroom, giving students that room to explore, to take up, uh, let's say, a coding language and learn it on their own and, you know, uh, follow it up with themselves in order to enhance their lifelong learning skills. Yeah, absolutely. Experiential learning, lifelong learning. I think you're all pretty much uh, on the same page here. I see Federico nodding. Federico, would you like to uh, share your ideas as well? Yeah, I, I would actually uh, like to think sometimes we limit, we limit ourselves thinking within the scope of a classroom. I think we need to understand like, if it's not happening today, perhaps that's not the best place where we should learn those abilities. Perhaps we should go more outside and the entire school system be thinking as an outdoors experience. I think like you have all these experiments around the world and they're proving that the traditional classroom, the traditional idea of school are really outdated. And young people like us and even younger don't relate. Yeah. Federico, I'm sorry, Yosa. Federico, are you saying now that we should abolish school? Because you're saying maybe we should just drop school and go outside. Is this your message to the world? Like, forget school and go outside? I think as go governments and politicians should try to think outside the box. How do we get the same things we get from traditional school in a different environment, you know, from a different framework? Yeah. So I think what all of three actually um, interestingly happen to point out and what you really have in common in your answers is that in the way it's currently formed, our education system seems to be failing us, right? I mean, I feel like I can summarize that in that way. Um, so if we move onward from that, 
um, from that premise. What would you guys think uh, can change? How can we push it forward? How can we uh, find or think of ways to not per se move away from that education system completely, as Lucas just implied, but at least um, transform the education system from within? Any ideas? Um, Federico, maybe we can start with you. Yeah, I think like one of the key parts is transform the way we learn. We have everything uh, differentiated by subject. I learned history at one point, I learned ge ge geography at another, math, physics, chemics. But we, all, we see it as a different uh, block of knowledge instead of understanding all the points of connection they have between each other. I think if we, if we turn to a project-based education, when we with an holistic view of what we are learning, and at the same time we're applying math, we're looking through history, we need to understand geography for the sake of a project. It gives you a sense of purpose to move forward yeah. and makes you able to learn at your own yeah. pace at the same time. I absolutely love that idea, the, 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 the idea of approaching learning and learning methods in a holistic way, in an integrated fashion. I completely share the, the, the frustration with everything being over compartmentalized, and I think that's absolutely not conducive for the development of, of broad thinking minds. Um, Okana, Leila, um, who wants to go first here in adding or brainstorming a little bit further? Leila, let's talk to you. Yeah, Leila. I will echo what uh, Federico said about um, reimagining the uh, uh, curricula uh, and focus more on making subjects more hands-on, whether they are STEM-based subjects or uh, arts and humanities, because those are also very important. And to also uh, emphasize on uh, teaching social skills, teamwork, uh, collaboration and try to infuse that, of course, with empathy. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say that really ties in with, the, with the, that skill of empathy that also really came up with the three of you. I think that's also a very valid point. Um, Makana, you have the very um, annoying task to now complete that. Um, do share your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I, I do think policy, uh, policy of higher education reform in the curriculum is really important. But at the same time, I think the uh, local community or like NGO and peers or volunteering at um, a particular communities is really, um, are really important for uh, people to obtain, I mean, brush, it, brush up their skills like, uh, um, and make their experience more personal and um, make the experience more like uh, specific. Yeah. Yeah, I also note that uh, NGOs, grassroots involvement, I think also, again, a very valid point. Yeah. I feel like, yeah, we're really on a roll here. Thank you so much. But pointing, um, I would like to plug into this discussion. Um, um, another thing that I feel like the three of you share is a worry about the current education system, also in terms of academic excellence and what we understand that ac academic excellence is about, right? Um, I think inevitably tied to that discussion is how we feel at school, our educational and mental well-being. And I think for that, I would like to pass the mic to Lucas because he has something very interesting to share here. Would you yeah. mind? Uh, uh, dear delegates, I want to show you a, a clip. I've been for another project. I've been touring um, East Asia, and I was in Hong Kong. And it has nothing to do with Asian school system. It has to do with school system all over the world. I saw this all over the world happening, but I was there with a the film crew, so we filmed it. I was at a university, all beautiful students, and I asked some questions. So let's look at the clip. Who here is not afraid to fail? Not afraid to fail. Who says, I don't, I don't mind failing? One. <laughs> okay, so to make sure that I know that you understood me, who is afraid to fail? Honest answers, who is afraid to fail? Is there someone who can tell me about the pressure? Why is it so high? Why do you feel so much pressure? Don't be afraid. <laughs> the question is, who here has a feeling I have to do better? And last question, who has a feeling I'm not good enough? So when you see this clip, for me it was, um, and it still is, that it touches me because 
all these people are bright, but the school system pushes them to excel and be better, 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 and have these limits that are impossible. It's not about social, it's not about how you feel, it's not about doing it together, it's about personal acceleration, which we'll never achieve. And you see that not only in Asia, but also in the West, also in, in the States, everywhere. And I think that is one of the worst things we do with our current school system. What do you think, delegates? Is it happening in your countries as well? Leila, I see you're nodding. Yeah, I think it's a very powerful uh, experiment. And I think, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, reverberated across the world because the education system is all about rote memorization or learning and about achieving that 100% uh, uh, mark or uh, uh, 4.0 or 5.0 GPA or A or A+. Plus. So yeah. uh, it was very eye-opening. Yeah. And Wakana, you also rose your hand? I think... Uh, actually, I have a teacher certificate in Japan, so uh, this is uh, from my experience as a um, teacher practitioner in a public school in Japan. But um, I think most of the public school in Japan is trying to um, measure the students' um, skills and uh, uh, their learning skills by like a, the same common um, measurement. Yeah. And, uh, so and requirements. So I think this is the most uh, the biggest problem. And even the student, uh, even the uh, teachers told me that um, they they should um, focus on to uh, give the students like uh, equal education and uh, really like a common same curriculum to all the students because this is the this is just the um, students. And the parents of the students' um, requirement to yes. the school. Yes. So everybody but has I, to have the I same do. standards. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is yes. difficult because everybody is different. Yusra. I think what Wakana, you're yes. already really giving very concrete examples, and that is helpful because that's actually where we want to go to. Um, I mean, apart from the video being very saddening and something that I think a lot of you around the world recognizes. I mean, all of you were nodding. We recognize this the, the pressure that is on um, and the dangers of academic uh, high performance. But um, any other examples, perhaps, I would like to tilt the discussion towards a more positive note on good examples, good practices, maybe schools that you know of that are on the right track, or uh, workshops that you follow that really uh, equip you with those very necessary broad skills. Um, maybe uh, given that we've just uh, talked with Leila and uh, Wakana, maybe Federico, um, is there something that you would like to suggest here of that, something that you know of that can just um, show that things can be different and can be approached in a different way? Yeah, definitely. For once, I, I would like to add that I don't think this problem is uh, depends on the schools, but on, so <clears throat> on society itself. Like the push to move forward, to always be advancing, I think it transcends school and we need to address it as such because otherwise we wouldn't solve the problem. And for a concrete example, uh, I, I was part of the team that designed and implemented uh, an entrepreneurship course for all the public schools in Buenos Aires, which is the biggest city in Argentina where wow. I live. And the key part was for us to make entrepreneurship, which is like an abstract concept, when you are 16, 17, uh, sexy to, kid, to, 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 to kids, to young people, we were able to relate it to The Simpsons, for example. We explained how uh, value proposition works, relating the entire uh, episode where Bart gets uh, an elephant and who are his key partners, when last he has to change its value proposition, why, and you see it even in the eyes of, of, of the kids, like how they, they relate. And when they relate, they understand. And when they understand, they incorporate the knowledge. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Kimberly, Kimberly, you rang. Any suggestions or ideas from the viewers? Uh, yes, I asked our viewers about some best practices on this topic as well, and they came up with some great examples. So I've put three of them together for you to watch. OK. OK, let's watch them. Three ideas for a better school system. I think for most Danish parents, it's at least as important to make sure that their kids have the right social skills than they have the academic skills. In my kids' schools, for instance, they would spend the first six months uh, where they would just cut off all the education part whenever there was a situation where the kids uh, were bullying or were yelling at each other, whatever. They would stop the education and then they would spend time solving that problem, trying to make sure that the whole class knew how to solve these problems, how to be a nice person to others. So the first six months they, they would do that all the time. 
and I would get more and more stressed because I was just, when are they going to learn how to read and write and all that? Uh, but of course, today, their acad academic skills are really high because when you feel comfortable, when you're confident, when you are not stressed, when there are no bullying, when you are aware of all the things that you can do and uh, all the things that, that is part of this uh, social environment that is in the classroom, then you will achieve better. Then you will be more confident also in the academic uh, way. So for me, it's very important that you have the academic skills, but you also have the social skills. The Green School in Bali takes green to a next level. Built in the middle of the jungle, it's nearly completely from bamboo. The school runs a recycling center that also operates in the surrounding community. It generates its own energy to meet big part of its needs and grows organic food for its vegetarian school lunches. The school raises a generation of children who live mindfully and actively care for the earth. The decade-old school applies a holistic academic approach from kindergarten through to high school. They focus on three key frames of learning, thematic, proficiency, and experiential. Instead of just reading a book and seeing the pictures and learning the facts, we get to see it happen live out there, and we get to feel the animals, we get to experience it with all five senses. Part of our design process was to make sure that we understood the people that we were designing for, so that we could design a model that was right for them. What we learned was that students really wish to have their imaginations engaged. From the design of the building, to the use of how the curriculum is structured, uh, to how the students interact during the day, uh, they rethought everything from the ground up. Todo colegio tradicional, el profesor llega a clases, te dicta y tú copias. Acá no. Acá el profesor llega a clases, te explica más a fondo y aprendes. Amazing examples, I think, you guys, but I feel like all of them quite kind of echo all of that, you've, all what you've been saying, so I feel like that's a really great match. Um, we prove in practice that all of your theories actually work and are possible, so that's amazing, and that also kind of deprives us of the need to really delve into that. One more final thing that I would really like to um, touch upon briefly with you, I feel like we cannot really draw this discussion to an end without touching upon a very important aspect of policy, and I... Um, I presume that as Y20 community members, you might agree, given that you're all about policymaking. So maybe as a takeaway for the viewer, for policymakers in positions that can make the difference, what would your absolute key policy priority be when it comes to future skills? Can we do a little round, starting from Akana? I think the most important thing for policymaking in this era is um, the balance between uh, uh, hard skills and uh, also the uh, soft skills. I think uh, Leila has pointed it out. Um, but um, technology def um, is differently needed, and like every country, the government is going to like push the push to run the skill to the children. But also, I think the uh, not only technology, but also the uh, soft skills like communication yeah. or maybe storytelling yeah. or like emotional emotional um, yeah. perspectives are also required Perfect. to. Um, give them. Great, perfect. So I hear focus on, on soft skills, um, social skills, empathy, um, storytelling. Leila, what would your key takeaway be? Sure. In addition to Wakana's point, I will uh, also uh, add that we need to focus more on introducing STEM-based STEM uh, education at an earlier age. Uh, it's not uh, rocket science <laughs> to basically teach someone how to code and to also uh, on the other side, empower the teachers and help them challenge themselves to reimagine what it's like to teach a curriculum fit for the 21st century. Absolutely. So I would focus more on early introduction of STEM-based subjects. Yeah, early STEM education, absolutely uh, important as well. Thank you so much, Leila. Federico, a final key point on the agenda? Great, no pressure. So <laughs> uh, I would like to add to what Laila and Wakana say on not only the what, because I think there's some in it all, but on the how. We need to, to be bold, to, to, to be able to teach differently, not, not only new things, but in a different way. Um, this, one, this coming from my experience in working in the government to other policymakers, we need to understand that this topic cannot be subject to party lines. There are a lot of studies, there are a lot of professional people thinking we need to move forward and understand party lines. It cannot be uh, subsumed into 
a, a government. You need to transcend governments, yeah. you know, to be able to have a long impact within the lives of the citizens. No. Well, maybe think... maybe we can ask the makers of The Simpsons to help us. <laughs> maybe. You know? I maybe. think I, uh, yeah, let's give them a call, <laughs> Federico. Absolutely. Or just you, for that matter. Yeah. But what I remember, and I, I love that you use that word bold, uh, brave, bold, I think. In fact, that's how I would describe the three of you. I'm quite impressed with all of the, the, the immediate knowledge that you have available. I think uh, if you haven't tapped yourself on the shoulder yet, you should really do that today, <laughs> speaking of self-love and excellence and so on. So unfortunately, we have to leave you guys, but we will do that on a high note and we won't leave you without Mark hitting us one final time with a 4C song or for the 5C song for that matter. Thank yeah. you so much. Mm, creativity. Let's say goodbye. Thank you so much for joining us. Wave, 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 wave all, from all over the world. Goodbye. If you enjoyed watching this episode and you want more, which you do want, we have six other episodes waiting for you. So make sure to check out the website, tune in and stay inspired because we need young minds to change the world. My name is Lukas. My name is Yusra. And we thank you so much. Thank Bye. You. Bye.